This tuck up position, which we can do in free space, can also be practiced against the wall to help us to find the balance point and build the stability and control mechanisms that we need to be able to go and perform it if our objective is to get into a freestanding handstand. But there's a couple of little cues within it that make it difficult in terms of actually getting the position right. So you can see Jacko's got his hands away from the wall, just like he would do if he was doing a, uh, a full kick up. But in this position, he's just going to pop up. So it's just these little bunny hops. The big thing in the tuck up is getting the rotation. If you keep your chest facing towards the floor, you never get the hips high enough and it feels like you're just kind of kicking around right into mid space and, and nothing's really working. The big thing to think about is if you've got to open the shoulder and you've got to let the head come through. If you do that and that you let that shoulder actually really go into full um, fl uh, flexion, when we let the head come between the ear or the ears through to between the biceps, we get the rotation. The hips will go where the head leads. So think about trying to commit to those things. The other thing, reason it's a little bit more difficult or scary is because the hips have actually got to go further than where they would normally do if we do a kick up handstand. The kick up means that we get a certain level of, a, of an arched back position because the hands are away from the wall, the feet touch the wall. In the tuck up, our bum is now that contact point, which is meaning that we actually have to then go a little bit more into this vertical position through the shoulders. So if we can start to play around with those things to feel the confidence and just kick up hard enough to hit the bum against the wall, that's not going to move. So you've got the confidence to, to just go for it. If we find that we want to kind of work down into the position because that's not clicking, what Jacko can actually do is go into a kick up handstand and we can bring ourselves in so we can give the brain an end point. It likes to know what the objective is. So when we go up, we walk the feet then down. We can then use them just to tap off the wall with the toes, bringing the, um, the, the hips forward slightly. And now we can find our tuck up position. To bridge the gap between those, the full tuck up, or from the kick up, sorry, the, and then the tuck up position, what Jacko can do is create a position where his feet are slightly sort of bent behind him, and he's going to find the wall here, exactly right, like that, and then he's going to bring his tuck up position from there, can still dab his feet, creating those balanced positions. There's a few different ways, and this is not an essential necessarily, depending on how you want to get into your handstand. But the biggest thing we see for most people is not kicking hard enough to commit to the rotation and stopping for whatever reason, allowing that shoulder to open up and the head to come through, which will bring the hips up into shape that they need to be in. So have a play around with those cues and see which one's working for you. You might have to unpick it a little bit, but as we said, if you can tell your brain what the end point is, then you've got some, a better reference of where you need to go when you start to commit to that movement pattern.